Hey guys, this is John from Stormy Studio and this is a little video to show you the work in progress on my point and click um, collectibles menu using tables. I've changed the artwork, um, probably just for the purposes of a template. Um, could be a quick run through. Um, you can click on that door and open it. Um, that state of the door is saved to a table. You can't click these items. Click on that door, you get a text pop up. Um, in, in here, Select an inventory, it scales up here. The, the length of that text stays up there is actually controlled from a column for each separate bit of text in a table. So if you've got more words, you could quickly change the number in the table and that text box will remain up for longer. Click the inventor inventory and uh, it scales up and down. Currently just the three boxes. Go through, when you change scene, the inventory automatically closes. Um, let's collect some items. You've collected a key, you found some potion, and they're here. Um, you can't highlight a box if there's nothing in it. Um, if you click on the same box twice, it unhighlights, or you can switch between items. Let's choose the key and click over here. You've unlocked the door, the door's opened. Again, that state's been saved to a table. Um, using save to tables rather than um, save keys, save attributes. I think it actually makes for a tidier setup. So in here we've got our three boxes, it's remembered the potion from the previous scene, and add other items, and won't let you pick any more, because you've only got the three slots. But here we have a bigger inventory with five items. And that's all done with a single single um, change of a self attribute. So you can very quickly add another inventory with eight boxes, um, 10, 20, whatever. These are spawned, so if you have too many, it might slow the game down on older devices. But you could change that setup so these were hidden off screen um, to help with loading times. Go back through, and there we go, that's that's it so far. Could be a quick run through of how some of it's set up. So, stop that. so for tables, we have an inventory table which keeps track of what items you've collected so far. The collectibles table. Um, this is where you save all the different collectibles in the game, um, give it a name, mainly for your own tracking, uh, whether it's been collected, this is where it saves the image, and this is tells you whether or not it's been used, collected, etc. There's the text where all the text boxes are linked to a different row, so you can just change your text here, um, decide how long it's going to be displayed in this row, um, this is an optional thing that I might be adding so you can choose where it's going to be positioned on screen and that's just a description so you can quickly work out which one you're after. There's a satchels table which keeps track of the uh, collectible inventories that allow you to have uh, more boxes, so small, medium, large. This just keeps track of whether or not they've been collected so they're destroyed instantly if, you, if you've already collected them and you revisit a scene. And then there's game states so you can keep track of um, if a door or an item in a game has been activated. This is rather than saving attributes, you just keep track of it here. And I've got zero for not at all used. There's one for activating and two for activated. Um, in the scenes, it's all nice and easy. If you change the image here, it changes the image when you collect it without any fuss with any rules at all. Um, yeah. Um, the inventory boxes are spawned to the right of this, so wherever this happens to live, they will spawn to the right of it. Previously I had code so it would always be centralised on screen, but I prefer it to the left. Alright, I'll update you again soon. Cheers!